917 now basketball is the second most popular sport in the world but its popularity isn't just about the game itself it's about culture it's about art it's about all the things that make us human and that's what Nick Green thinks yeah he spoke to a lot of smart people about it too to learn about it from every angle his new book is called how to watch basketball like a genius what game designers economists ballet choreographers and theoretical astrophysicists reveal about the greatest game on earth mm. And Nick Green joins us live. Nick, good to see hey, you. Hey, Nick. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, well, let's start at the beginning, if, if, if you will. And I've, I've read some of the sure. book, and I, and I find it fascinating. But I, I, I got to know how in the hell you walked into a publisher's office and pitched <laughs> this idea that seems so far out of left field. <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, you know, it's something that... Uh, I just I love talking to smart people. I love basketball, and I figured if I could combine the two, um, I'd feel comfortable writing at length about it. And luckily, uh, there was at least one publisher who uh, agreed and, and got duped. <laughs> so, give us an example. You talked to magicians, choreographers, astrophysicists. I think I think it was the astrophysicist who looked at defense. So, give us yes. an example of how this works. Yeah. Well, for for that example. Um, you know, with defense, it's something to me, you know, good te team defense tends to be invisible. Um, it's essentially the absence of good offense. It's when the offense can't do what it wants because the defense is working in Congress and cohesively. Um, and so I spoke to an, a theoretical, the theoretical astrophysicist because uh, he was attuned at watching for black holes and cosmic events, you know, light years away, things that we couldn't see, but he could intuit and use data to kind of track patterns. And it does turn out that he watches team defense in a kind of interesting visual special way. He looks at it like, um, he called it a iridescent turtle shell with convective cells sort of spinning around and pushing uh, players to the perimeter, which I thought was, was fascinating and the kind of thing that I definitely wouldn't have thought, on, <laughs> thought of on my right. own. Right, right. Yeah, on the topic of, uh, of flopping, that's, that's something we have great fun with on this yeah. show. I love a good NBA flop, and you could have come to the two of us, and we would have given you our thoughts on flopping. Instead, you, you went to a, a casting director and a philosopher, <laughs> and, and I'm curious what, what they had to say about flopping. Yeah, well, I, I spoke to a, a specifically a soap opera casting director um, to kind of uh, talk to someone who is attuned to... Uh, I think the the sort of the more um, uh, soap opera style of performance that we sometimes see in basketball and her advice to floppers was to tone it down a little bit. So when a soap opera casting director is telling you to tone it down, that's a, a sign, I think. Um, <laughs> and the philosopher, it was sort of the question of, is it ethical? Is it right? Um, and, you know, his kind of take on it was that there is wiggle room in the rules and um, at the highest levels of the game where it is refereed and the referee's sort of agency is part of the game, you are allowed to, I guess, push it as far as you can get away with or at huh. least try, uh, which I thought was interesting. Uh, you say basketball is a game that kind of lent itself to creativity, which kind of forced uh, the game to evolve in certain ways. And one of those ways was dribbling. Where did dribbling come from? And why did you talk to, I think, I think it was a magician about dribbling. Yeah, so the, a lot of the book is sort of tracking the history and evolution of the game. And, and one of the most interesting things about basketball, early basketball to me, was that in Naismith's original 13 rules, you weren't allowed to move with the ball, um, which is pretty um, uh, counter, uh, it counters the entire spirit of the game as we would understand it. The, the first people to dribble were um, the Yale basketball team. They essentially cheated by um, passing to themselves, they called it. They kind of uh, had a sly little way to get around the rules and it was you know such a fun entertaining wrinkle to the game that it it just basically got adapted and was accepted so when players can kind of experiment within the rules and fudge them a little bit and, and that's been the story of the game for the past 125 years or so is, is players sort of pushing the boundaries and sometimes breaking them and, and then I spoke to magicians because I wanted to know if you know when you watch a great dribbler like Chris Paul or Kyrie Irving, you know, they're doing all these these sorts of tricks of, of misdirection. And I wanted to talk to magicians to see what they thought if, if these were actual tricks. And they um they they didn't kind of uh well I 
some some said they were tricks. Others said there was nothing like nothing like magic because I think they're a little protective of their um, their field of work as magicians tend to be. But uh, pick up the book and, and find out exactly what <laughs> <Okay>. they say. <laughs> yeah, most if not all the people you, you talk to, non non basketball fans, and I, I wonder after talking to all these people, um, did it change? I don't know. Your, not necessarily your outlook on basketball, but how the game has evolved, or did it make you see basketball in a different light? Yeah, I think I'm. I'm definitely. Um, <clears throat> it makes me think twice about being a crusty old timer, which I, I tend to be. Um, you know, the game has changed so much and relatively quickly. Um, you know, so when we look at things like a three pointer, and, and it. it, it, it it can seem like a little, you know it's a lot right now and there's too many threes the game adjusts itself it evolves it self corrects often um so i think it taught me to be patient and, and appreciate the game in its current state because uh you know it's going to change soon yeah well the book is how to watch basketball like a genius and you can check out nick on social media nick thanks for joining us this morning thanks for having me